Hey everyone, this is Matthew, and I have something pretty exciting to share with you today, which is that um, recently a new way to do seed reverse engineering has sort of been developed. And I'm going to share with you today uh, how we use this method to crack the seed of um, X's Adventures in Minecraft, one of the first Minecraft Let's Plays that really helped this game get back off its off its feet back in 2010. Um, I had a lot of help. Both Captain Wutax and Trenton both deserve oodles of credit. Um, but this is going to be a nice, oh, it's going to be a nice high level overview of uh, the method that we used. Uh, and the hope is that uh, I'm going to be putting out a three part series on seed reverse engineering and the new methods. And Hopefully this should whet your appetite enough to know, let you know what's possible and what I've been up to these past few months. And so, yeah, let's get started. So recently there's been this thing, PacPNG, which has created just an incredible amount of interest in seed reverse engineering. And in particular, the PacPNG problem takes place in Alpha 1.2. And so, but that's a very hard problem to do because it's sort of a nondescript hill that you would want to be re reversing there. So naturally, we started to ask the question, is there something easier from Alpha that we can try and reverse first? And Ant Venom actually suggested to crack the seed of X's adventures in Minecraft, which was, for the unfamiliar, an old Alpha Let's Play, which back in 2010, this Let's Play was one of the first things that really helped Minecraft get off the ground. And so, um, after looking at a bit of a footage, a guy named Trenton was able to recreate most of the floor of a dungeon and recover the exact coordinates of the spawner block. And as it turns out, that is all you need to recover the entire seed. So, to understand how we did this, um, we got to understand how dungeons work. So for every population region, which is like a chunk, but it's uh, eight is added to both the X and Z coordinates for technical reasons. And for every one of these population regions, the game tries to place eight dungeons and it chooses a random X and Z coordinate between zero and 15 within that population region to try and place the dungeon. And it also chooses a random Y coordinate between zero and 127. And once it's done that, it's, there's a little bit more randomness in there, which is that it chooses to make the dungeon either seven or nine blocks wide on both axes. So you can get seven by seven dungeons, seven by nine, nine by seven, nine by nine, etc. And the final bit of randomness is that if the game does end up finding sufficient conditions for a dungeon to spawn, um, every block in the floor has a one-fourth chance of being cobblestone. So it turns out if you count up, you know, the bits of information that each one of these calls gets you, you actually have more than enough information to recover an entire, um, at the very least, recover an entire what we call a population seed. There's more than 48 bits of information the vast majority of the time. So that means that dungeons are a pretty prime candidate for seed reverse engineering. The other thing I should mention is that dungeons need some special conditions to spawn. It's not like the game actually places eight dungeons per chunk. Um, the dungeons have sort of this check uh, at their ceiling for just um, a complete a ceiling made completely out of solid blocks that the dungeons can replace. And they have the same check at the floor. And the other weird check that dungeons have, because the developers didn't want dungeons um, generating deep underground where you would never find them, Dungeons have a check for between one and five air blocks on the edge of the dungeon uh, at the height of the spawner. So what that kind of means is that dungeons can only really be placed at um, the side of caves. So you, so you know, they're never like placed right slap bang in the middle of a cave with air all around them. Like you never find just a dungeon floor. They're, they're always, but there's always at least some level of opening into a cave. Um, 
So the question now is, we have all this information from dungeons. Are we able to just brute force across seeds and find the seed which has the dungeon that has the given floor pattern, has the given location, has the given height? And uh, at first it seems promising because dungeons only depend on the bottom 48 bits of our world seed. So we don't actually need to check all two to the 64 world seeds. We'll get to how you get the top 16 bits later, but for now we're only concerning ourselves with the bottom 48 bits of our world seed. So that's good, right? Two to the 48 is a large number, but it's not impossible to brute force across. But there's a wrench thrown in the works, which is that, remember how I said dungeons do eight attempts? Um, well, we don't know when we're just looking at video footage of a dungeon, we don't actually know which dungeon of the eight attempts we're looking at. So that sort of multiplies the amount of things you need to check uh, by eight. So now we're looking at checking around two quadrillion, right? Two to the 48 seeds and then eight possible dungeons for each seed. So that's, that's a bit of a wrench in the works. And the other problem is that uh, dungeons aren't like a surface level, like instantly, like given a seed, is there a dungeon there? Um, there's a lot of stuff uh, in between the world seed and the dungeons, and that adds a big overhead to your brute force. So ultimately, the answer to whether or not we can brute force dungeons, at least naively, is no. But that's not the end of the story, because now we're going to talk about going backward. Um, so uh, a big theme on my channel over these next few months is going to be that Java Random sucks. And because Java Random sucks, we're really lucky, because all dungeon randomness is controlled by Java Random, which is, for the unfamiliar, um, that's the native random number generator used by the Java programming language. So if you want to make random numbers using Java, chances are you're going to end up using Java Random. Um, so for our purposes, um, there's other ways that Java Random can work, but for our purposes, in the case of Dungeons, Java Random is going to update its internal seed by multiplying it by a large prime number, chopping off a bunch of the top bits, um, adding a, adding 11, actually, and then it's going to return whatever the remaining bits on top are. And in particular, we get very lucky with dungeons because the call for y height, remember how I told you that's between 0 and 127? It turns out that call for y height is the um, top seven bits of the internal seed uh, when that particular piece of code to find the y height is running. So that tells us some, some really valuable information about Java Random, the, what, the state of Java Random at that time. And so um, an algorithm suggests itself. We set our y height to what we know as the top seven bits of our seed. Then we only have 41 remaining bits left. And we just brute force across those. That's only two to the 41. That sounds like a lot. Um, but thanks to Captain Wutex and GPUs, um, that part of the process, that brute forcing, uh, takes underneath a minute. It's just a vast, you know, if you think about it, 2 to the 41 compared to the 2 to the 51 earlier, that's around an 1,000 times speed up. And also, just calling Java random is a lot less costly than going through the um, Minecraft code each time. So already, this means that we can identify um, sort of the internal seed of Java random that could have possibly produced the dungeon, okay? But sadly, that's not the end of the story, right? So we've always known that we could do this. Um, the next trick is that we need to get from that internal seed, like sort of buried deep in the number of calls that Java Random has to do to generate all the random things in Minecraft. We have to take that internal seed. We got to go back to what Minecraft set the random number generator to. Then we got to go from what Minecraft set the random number generator to back to the actual world seed of the world. And so we're going to break that down into stages, okay? So first of all, we have the we have the internal seed at the time that the game figured out what the y height of the dungeon should be. And we've got to go back to the population seed. And this is something I'm going to make a video on. But because Java Random is just, you know, sort of multiplying, chopping, and adding each time, it's actually 
the algebra to go back um, to what the random number generator was initially set to is actually pretty simple compared to some of the other stuff that we have to do. Um, the one problem with that is that we have to know in order to do that algebra, we have to know how many times Java random got called. And in this case, uh, it turns out that is possible. Uh, dungeons in alpha versions, especially, we got very lucky because, you know, we have that randomness introduced because we don't know which one of the eight dungeons we're looking at. But um, it's only, there's only eight possibilities, right? We can just say, okay, we think the first dungeon succeeded. Then the random must have done this many calls because the dungeons are one of the first things done with that random object. And then, you know, if we say it's the second one, okay, then we got to add five to our number of calls because um, the first dungeon would have done five calls, which would have failed. Then we can say, okay, we're looking at the second one. And then if this, if say we think that we're looking at the seventh one, well, then the first six dungeons did five calls each. So that would be 30 extra calls that we need to account for. But you, you get the gist, right? There's only eight. So once we crack an internal seed, um, we can go back to the eight different possibilities of what the random number generator could have been set to. One for, you know, each dungeon it could have possibly been in terms of when the game's trying to place it. And the problem, though, is that what the game sets the Java random seed to be is still not the world seed. Um, so once we have what the game set Java random seed to, we have to convert that number back to the world seed. And so that's the big trick, right? So this is how uh, what we call the population seed, uh, which is what Minecraft sets that random object to, um, gets set. Uh, so you can see um, the r dot next long. That's kind of making a very very large random number, and same thing with uh, the second r r dot next long. Right, both a and b are very large random numbers, and then uh, you take a weighted sum of them by the chunk coordinates, and then you do what's called a bitwise XOR with seed which I will go into more detail because I'm going to make a full video about this particular stage of the process in the future. Um, but for now, uh, the roughly what all you need to know is that we can reverse the return value of the above code by sort of alternating between uh, undoing the XOR by seed, using that to get information about the sum, and then using information about the sum to get more uh, information about the seed. So you can sort of climb up the ladder bit by bit by bit by bit until you have recovered the entire seed. Um, and, but seriously, reversing this is a non-trivial thing. I will be doing a video on this, I promise. It's gonna be, part, I have a series planned. It's gonna be part three in the series. So subscribe if you care. Um, moving on. So let, let's review where we've gotten, right? Because I know this is a bit hairy. We, have, we had a dungeon. We had information on its floor. We had information about its position. We started from the Y height of the dungeon. We then checked, given a Y height and a bottom 41 bits, we checked if that guess of the, well, you know, the internal seed at that time, we checked if that guess would give us the dungeon that we're looking at. Okay, and for the one result that actually gave us the dungeon that we were looking at in X's seed, um, we then took that and we did eight guesses because we don't know. Are we looking at the first dungeon, the second dungeon, the third, all the way up to the eighth dungeon? We did those eight guesses, and for each one of those guesses, we pulled it back to its own population seeds. Okay, so then we had eight population seeds. And then we put that through my fancy reversal algorithm, which goes back through this code here. And that finally recovers us the bottom 48 bits of world seed. So now we have 48 bits of world seed. And, but the thing is, is that those of you who are familiar with Minecraft level generation, you kind of know that um, seeds are not 48 bit things. They're 64 bits, they're longs. 
And but it turns out, um, Minecraft, when you click random world, Minecraft doesn't actually make you a fully random seed. Once again, it uses Java random, and Java random, uh, to reiterate, is bad. So for a given bottom 48 bits, um, you can only find at most two 64 va bit values that would have those um, bottom 48 bits. So once you have the bottom 48 bits, you're basically done. So, and in fact, in fact, as we found out when we were doing this project in alpha, this doesn't even matter because the only the bottom 48 bits are ever used to generate the world. In modern versions, sometimes the entire seed is used to do biomes and whatnot. But in alpha, the biome generation is primitive enough that only the bottom 48 bits matter. So that was kind of surprising to me, but I think some others knew about that already. And so in our case, we got um, decently lucky. Uh, my reversal algorithm uh, ended up finding nine possible world seeds. So of our eight guesses, they got turned into nine possible world seeds. And well, of course, nine's a very small number. So we manually checked each seed. And we ended up found that, well, I'm not going to say that number out loud, but we found that that number was the seed of X's uh, Adventures in Minecraft. So, so that's kind of the high level overview, right, of this cracking algorithm. And it was really, it was really a very cool experience to crack this ancient Let's Play, right? Um, and from very grainy footage, the worst part of this project by far was reconstructing uh, the dungeon and counting the coordinates, right? Um, once you have this algorithm, though, or the, rather these algorithms, uh, seed reverse engineering becomes a far, far uh, more tractable problem. So I'm hoping to have more of a series out uh, discussing, uh, in, in particular, um, the algebra that you have to do to sort of reverse forward and backwards Java random arbitrarily. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about something that I didn't really mention here, but if you don't have access to a Captain Wutex to write your GPU code, um, there are other ways to brute force um, back here. Yeah, back, back here when we're checking for seeds which could possibly generate uh, you can do slightly better than just brute force. You, well, you can actually do a lot better than just brute forcing across the bottom 41 bits. Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit about what's called lattice reduction techniques in the second video in the series. And that would be how you would solve that problem if uh, you were dealing with something a lot more complicated than a dungeon, which didn't give you seven bits for free. Um, and then the final video, we're going to discuss this algorithm in a lot more detail and explain kind of how we do that climbing from, okay, we only know a little bit of seed to, okay, we only know a little bit of that sum, and then, you know, climbing up further and further and further. So that'll be the third video. And then, yeah, thanks for watching so long. And uh, I hope I hope I didn't bore you too much. And, oh, yeah, I suppose I should mention... Uh, I, I will have some content coming soon. That's not going to be just a big math info dump on you. Um, I, there's some really cool Minecraft stuff that's been done over this past year that I would really love to share with you guys. So thank you for watching. Uh, see ya.